hi friends welcome to my youtube channel hope you all are doing well so today is part 4 of dot net interview question and answer series so if you have not watched part 1 2 3 i'll make sure to put those videos in the description so you can go and check them out so before moving to to this video maybe i i would just suggest you to watch part 1 2 3 so that you get a lot of clarity and familiarity with with the basic level of questions before moving for this part so in this video i am just taking 5 to 6 questions just to make the video length i mean little short so today i am going to talk about apis and and you know how 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 much i love working with apis so i have just wore the t-shirt with i love apis yeah so that's my favorite part to work with the apis so without wasting any further time let's move on to the slide so i'll move on to the next slide Okay, so the first question on APIs. So what is the concept of REST and how do you create a web API? So REST means a representational state transfer. Okay, so let me take the pen here. So REST full form means re representational state transfer. This is an architectural style for designing the networked applications. So the basic principles of REST include the client service uh, server architecture where the client will send an HTTP request for getting some resource from the server right and it has a uniform interface which means that the APIs will have some HTTP methods like get post put delete right so which is uniform across the implementations and then it has also the behavior of statelessness which means that the server is not going to keep any of the information of the client so whenever a client requests for a resource it has to provide all the necessary information to the server so that it can act on that information and provide you the relevant data now there are some steps for creating the web apis right so how do we create a web api applications so what you need to do is first you need to create a new asp.net core web api project template and then you will be defining a model classes like request model and the response model okay and then you would ideally need to create a controller class okay so inside that controller class you will be implementing controller actions these actions will be nothing like but http get maybe post as per your requirement right whether you want to implement get post put delete or whatever is available right you can implement anything in the controller actions and then you will be configuring a routing so routing means like whenever a client you know puts a request to the server it has to provide a, you have to provide a route in the api right maybe if i say http get if it's a get endpoint and I, then i have to provide a route saying like slash get something okay so this is the route this will be masked and accordingly the controller action will be called right and then the, the last step is to test your api you can use postman to test your apis so this is the flow which you will be needing when you are about to create a web api application so this is just in brief what i want to cover here maybe just take a look on some of the examples and i also just i will also put a code in the next slide so that you guys can at least have a look at the basic template of creating the web applications so this is the code which i have put in here so if you see here we are trying to create a controller class here so this is a controller class which inherits from controller base and then this is the route this is the route on the controller level so how this route will map to it will be like api slash this is the parameterized path so which means the name of the controller will be appended on this so it will be like api and name of controller is users controller so it will be users here okay it will not append the controller right so it is by default the the behavior of dot net framework that that only the what is prefixed before controller will be upon, appended in the controller path so it will be api slash users now you have some action methods right so this is one action method get right where you have where you don't have a custom route here so 
if you have multiple get you have to identify both of them right so when a client requests if the client wants to call this get endpoint then by default the url will be slash api slash users slash if you want to call this action method then you have to pass in some id right parameterized this is a parameterized so you have to pass the id value maybe one two three right if you call this endpoint then the request will be mapped to this action method and if you just call this endpoint with the get request the request is going to map to this action method right and then you have http post and you know action method then you have your model class right so this model class you are returning from here so that's what i wanted to show you in this example hope you got it and maybe just you know do some practice and and start looking at some of more more examples complex examples as well so let's move on to the next slide okay so the next question is what are the different types of http methods when to use what right so there as i discussed in the previous slide there are n number of http methods some of them or maybe i have i have just listed all of them here so http get what is get used for this get method is used for some operations which try to retrieve the data without modifying the server state so getting some resource getting some data from the server that's where the get is used for now the post endpoint it is used for operations which creates a new resource like you want to create an entry in the database so you will use a post now the put endpoint put method is used to update an existing resource with the new data you may want to include or update some some of the fields in the existing data then you can use put delete is used to delete some resource from the server okay so you can pass in some identifier maybe i want to delete a resource where the id is 1 2 3 so you can pass in some id and it is going to delete it the patch method the patch method is used when you need to make partial updates to a resource now the head it is used when you need to retrieve metadata about a resource then you can use head basically in our project implementations we typically use get post put delete and patch maybe in rare cases you will be needing to you know work with head options and trace so just take some time and and see and read about these as well okay now i'll move on to the next slide so the next question is what is the difference between a rest api and a webhook so what is a webhook and why is it used so what is a rest api a rest api as we have already talked in the previous slide it is an interface which allows communication between a client and a server over http protocol right so the first point now it follows the principles of rest which means that uniform interface and resource based in based interactions and it is stateless okay now the rest apis are typically used to expose a set of endpoints which clients can interact with right the crud operations create read update delete now in contrast to this a webhook a webhook is basically used for real time communication so it is mostly used in the event driven architectures where you want to notify an external system when something occurs so in that case you are going to use webhook so for example let's take an example of e-commerce website so whenever an order is placed right whenever an order is placed you may want to inform a shipping service there is a different service or department shipping department so as soon as someone places an order you want to create an event or notify the shipping service so rather than shipping service listening or maybe polling for an order placement you are notifying as soon as the order is placed so this is a real time communication notification going on to shipping service so that it can process the order and and deliver it to the relevant candidate okay so in this case you will use a webhook so unlike a rest api where clients initiate request to retrieve data with the webhook the server initiates request to push data to external systems so webhooks are basically used in server to server communications so server to server communication okay so spend some time on this slide maybe pause the video and just go through all these points 
which I have mentioned here. Okay, now I'll move on to the next slide. Okay, so the next question is, how do you make a controller class? What all things you put in that class to make it a controller class? Okay, so in ASP.NET Core, a controller class is a, just a simple C sharp class which handles the job of that class is to handle the incoming HTTP requests and it and it produces a appropriate response. So as I have shown you in the previous video that we had a controller class and, and then it has action methods. So it the, the few few of the stuff which needs to be put in in that controller class is that your controller class has to inherit from a controller base class. Okay, then you have to define some routes and attributes, some attributes like API controller, right? You have to mark your controller class with this attribute so that the .NET framework will know that okay this is not a normal class this is a controller class and then you can have more attributes like HTTP GET to mark your action methods with GET POST PUT right and then you will define your action methods then you will decorate the action methods with the route right and then maybe from body then dependency injection then you may want to interact with the service layer or maybe interact with some external system or the cloud services then you will want to use a constructor dependency injection right? to make the controller class light because controller classes should be very light they should always take the request from the client the http request and then forward it to the service layer or the wrapper level and then they will get back the response and controller class will just show it to the user and send back the response right so controller classes should be as light as possible now i'll move on to the next slide so what is http action result class and i action result interface so the http action result class it represents the result of an action method in a web api controller it also provides some convenience methods like okay bad request and not found methods which you can use so okay will be used you can use okay like okay if your validation is successful and you get a res proper response to return you can use okay and then send your response here okay now if in case of the validation failures or maybe the input parameters passed are not valid then you can return bad request not found etc now in case of i action result this is a contract okay this is an interface which provides a contract for classes which are implementing the action results. So it provides more flexibility, right? You can create your own custom action result class and implement this interface, right? So it, it allows you to have more flexibility by allowing custom implementations of action results. Now I'll move on to the next slide. So what are different HTTP status codes? So this is also a very important question. So as you can see on my slide here, there are different category of status codes. So 200, you know, 3xx, 4xx, 5xx. So in 200, 200 means okay. Now 201, which means that 200 means that your server has returned the requested resource, which is successful. Okay. 201 is created that, that you wanted to create some resource, maybe create an entry in the database which is successful so you can return 201 in that case now 204 it is no content so when the server successfully process the request but it does not return anything it returns void so that's a 204 no content now 301 which is moved permanently for example if the requested resource has moved to a new location then 301 similarly 302 304 not modified that if the client just gets a cached copy of the resource right and so there is nothing for the server to change in that or it has that nothing is changed from the last request then you can return 304 not modified the 400 is for bad request when your validation and input parameters passed are not correct then you can return 400 401 in unauthorized when the client does not have the access to some of the resource which you are trying to access forbidden which means that it, it is authenticated but it is not authorized to perform some request then you can return forbidden 404 is not found that whatever you are requesting is, is not available on the server so you can return 404 now the 500 error codes 
are related to the server errors. So 500 internal server error, it's a generic error message indicating that something is wrong on the server. Not implemented means you are trying to access some functionality which is not implemented by this in the server side. So that's 501. Then bad gateway may be due to the gateway or proxy errors. Now 543 service unavailable, maybe you are trying to access a service which is in maintenance or it's still in deployment, it's not successful. So these are the error codes which you may want to go through because this is very much asked in the interviews. So hope you like the video and if you like my content, please do like, comment, share and subscribe and share it with your friends, colleagues. Okay, all right, then see you in the next video. Thanks, have a nice time, bye-bye.